would you go along with him when he said in John 8, 58, before Abraham was, ego, amy, I am. Now, will you please turn to me with Matthew eleven twenty seven? 27. And while you're doing that, I hope you notice that God the Father is said to reveal the identity of the Son. That's what you just read. In Matthew 17, he said, but my Father, which is in heaven, has revealed that to you. Now I'll turn to Matthew eleven twenty seven. Let's examine, this, let's examine its contents. Matthew eleven twenty seven. All things are delivered unto me of my Father. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son. And he he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Thinking about the staggering implication of what Jesus just said. Notice that he did not say no one knows the Father as well as I know him. He says no one knows the Father except the Son. Jesus says, in effect, that he knows God as well as God knows him. His knowledge of God is unique precisely because his knowledge of God is exhaustive. As the Son, Jesus' knowledge of the Father is no acquired thing, but a knowledge based upon the identity of nature and eternity of communion. In a word, Jesus Christ is part of the self-knowledge of the Godhead. He is part of God's self-consciousness. Can I get an amen? Amen. But Jesus didn't stop there. He did not come to throw out darkness and alienation from God into a deeper shadow by asserting his oneness and intimacy with God. He was set not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him, John 3, 17. Therefore, he continues, no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. The Son has come to earth not merely to share it as information but as salvation he has come to tell a fallen world that a holy and outraged God has decreed to love it and call a people out to be sons of the kingdom for God so loved the world that he gave his only unique son Managenes He gave his only son. Who did he have in mind, Brother Bruce? You and me. I'm going to get a little bit ahead of myself. And when he died on that cross, he said, it is finished. It's the Greek word, tetelestai. Paid in full. He paid your redemption in full. There's not one thing that you can do. There's not one you can say, but you can trust in the Son of God. Early in this passage, Matthew eleven twenty-seven, 27, Jesus has said that all things were delivered to him by his Father. What had been delivered to the Son was not the knowledge of the Father. He had that by nature. But the Messianic right to fulfill the Father's plan for salvation for sinful, needy men like you and me. The infinite depths of the Father are known by the Son. Now just think now. Just think what Jesus said. I alone know the Father exhaustively. No one else. And I'm able to reveal him to you. The infinite depths of the Father are known by the Son because of this reason. In Him, Titus 2 9, excuse me, Colossians 2 9, in Him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In Jesus Christ dwells all the fullness of God. That's what Colossians 2 9 says. That's the King James Version. Let's take another, let's take, let's take other versions too when we get a chance. All things are delivered unto me by my Father, and no one knoweth the Son but the Father. What do you mean all? All persons, angels, good angels, bad angels, men. 
All persons are delivered to him. Angels and men, good angels, are delivered to him to be confirmed to him as their head and to be made use of him by him. Spirits in both his incarnate and eternal state of... Excuse me, let me back up. I'm getting excited. Is it okay to get excited? We get excited about a lot of things. Why not get excited about Jesus? In both his incarnate and eternal state, Jesus and the Father know each other in an exclusive way, which in biblical language means that they enjoy an exclusive relationship. For Jesus' the Son, the Father, is my Father. They enjoy a direct, intuitive, and immediate knowledge that is grounded in their divine relationship as Father and Son. As such, what the Father and the Son share stands far apart from all human relationships and human knowledge. Thus, Jesus' sonship involves more than a unique filial consciousness. It involves an exclusive, essential relationship between the Father and the Son. In his incarnate state, Jesus received from the Father the exclusive authority to reveal the Father, which does not imply the Son's inferiority to the Father, but the process of revelation. Humans can know the Father only through the sovereign will of the Son's revelation. Can I get a witness? Therefore, a crucial element of Jesus' messianic mission is to impart to people a mediated knowledge of God. Let's go back to Colossians 2.9. How does the Son know the infinite depths of the Father? Because he shares the Father's very essence. Colossians 2.9, in him, this is Young's literal translation, in him doth the tabernacle of the fullness of the Godhead bodily dwell. Darby's translation, in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And that word uh, dwell comes from the word means, I don't want to get mixed up here, but it, it, it's a word that means it dwells in home. This is no foreign thing to Jesus Christ. He always had it. The word is kata oika. Kata means down and oika means house. Returning now to the revelation of the Bible, choose you and me. First we saw that it was the Father who reveals the identity of the Son. Then next in Matthew, we said, then the Son who alone fully knows the Father. And he, the Son, reveals divine truths to us. But let's take one more step. I want you to go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 through 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 through 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 through 15. But God revealed them unto us by his what, ladies and gentlemen? Spirit. By his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Verses 13 and 14. <clears throat> Excuse me. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. I'm going to stop at verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can I know them, because they are spiritually discerned. How did you get to know the Lord Jesus Christ? Jesus said, I'm going to send the Spirit. I'm going to send another comforter. And that word another means another of the same kind. Who is he going to talk about? He's going to talk about me. Not meeting me, of course. He's going to talk about Jesus. 